Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the shell scripting series. I know you guys thought that I actually left the series, but uh, really I haven't, uh, you know, just really did not get the time to record uh, all of the next videos. So in this video, we are going to be looking at menus and how to create menus in shell scripting. And uh, of course, now the first thing that, you know, is coming into your mind is, well, why exactly do we need a menu? Well, menus are there to provide a user with options, similar to uh, when you go to a restaurant, uh, you know, you ask them for their menu, they give you their menu, and the menu then contains options available, uh, you know, from which you can select, and uh, from that you get your desired meal. Now, of course, I know I've just explained it in a very layman's way, but uh, with shell scripting and really with any programming language, decision making or providing uh, the different decisions for a user to make is uh, very, very important. And that's primarily why I want to cover this, because as we now look at creating even larger complex scripts, remember, we need to also fill them with uh, functionality. And one of uh, or the most important pieces of functionality is giving a users options to select from. And luckily for us, uh, shell scripting actually pro gives us a very, very good base to work with when we talk about having menus and options. All right, so uh, let's get started. Now, as I mentioned, uh, menus are used to provide a user with options. And given that logic, we can assume that um, that menus also will incorporate some sort of a loop, all right? And obviously the value selected is going to be stored in a variable, which can then be used for further conditional uh, decision-making or can be used with uh, the conditional statements to make further decision and obviously to, to, uh, to give the code continuity. Uh, all right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you the syntax in regards to creating a menu, and then we'll move on uh, to creating a simple script that will essentially prompt a user uh, or ask a user for a piece of information or to select an option from the menu. And uh, once they've um, they've selected the option, it's going to display to us uh, from the uh, from the uh, it's going to display the value of the option and uh, the actual value from the list. Uh, and obviously, it's going to store it's going to show us what they are and in what variables they're stored in. All right, so I know that sounded like a lot, but uh, you'll get it once we get started. All right, so the syntax is extremely simple. All right, the syntax is for creating a menu or a list, and not, not really a list, a menu is essentially select, all right? So you initialize it like this, all right? So select, simple as that. Uh, but in what pretext are you going to use it? And this is where we really get into it. So as, as I mentioned, it's in the form of a loop. So we can say select, uh, and then we select, uh, and now is where we use the first variable, which is going to be the variable uh, that holds the option. The option can be sorted into the placement. So either option one, option two, option three, all the way to as many options as you want. And then we have um, the uh, the actual name of the option. So for example, if you're in a restaurant, uh, let's say option one is a burger, uh, option two is, uh, I don't know, a hot dog or something like that. So uh, essentially, there are two uh, distinctions. The option is the number, right? And uh, the the actual name of the of the uh, of the option is a burger. So you know, option one is given to the burger. Option two is given to the hot dog. So I'll explain that. So uh, that would essentially come as uh, as the following. So you know, you can say select option in, and then we select the variable or the list that is holding these um, these values for each of the options. So uh, in this case, we can you know, we can simply just say uh, we can say meals uh, as we'll follow the example over here. And since we haven't initialized this list or variable, it really won't prompt us anything. And we then say do. And as, as I mentioned, because uh, because uh, sorry, we uh, we actually initialize that outside because it's like a loop, we then insert our options or code in here. All right, so I just wanted to explain the simple syntax. So we'll we'll follow that example. We're going to uh, take a simple scenario where it's going to prompt the user to select the meal that they want to eat. All right, so we're just going to say echo. I've already created, uh, selected my, I've already created the shebang and given my script right here called menus.shell. I've given it uh, executable permission, so we're ready to go. All right, so I'm going to say echo, uh, please. Or we can make it a bit friendly. We can say welcome 
to uh we can say welcome to uh you know uh bobs uh welcome to bobs burgers yeah for those of you who get it uh you'll that'll be a very nice easter egg uh anyway i don't know why i'm getting into that all right so welcome to bobs burgers um we can say uh, another echo let's just i know it's a really simple script uh, we can say please uh select what you whoops yeah yeah we do not want to use the select right now so we will say please choose what you want to eat all right and we'll use a colon there and uh, we'll close that all right so please select what you want to eat now we need to initialize uh we need to actually create a list or a variable that is going to hold now of course a list is much more suitable because it holds more than one value or options all right and to do this we uh, simply it's very simple to create this uh, a list we just give it a name so in this case i'm just going to call the list meals and the meals are going to be equal to we're just going to say um i'll just say a burger the second one we do not um we do not uh use any type of uh we do not split the data from uh, from the other piece of data with a comma or a colon similar to what you do with other programming languages instead we just leave a space and we're just going to say uh we're just going to say fries uh yeah we will just give two options so burgers a uh, burger and fries so really really simple uh, and that's essentially what the list is going to contain all right so we've already given uh we essentially already have the data that the user is going to be able to choose from so now we would say uh select all right and now we we're, we're going to initialize the variable option because the option is a very important so option uh the option is going to be in meals as we uh as we said so the uh, so select the option in the meal and the option can be either option 1 or option 2 all right so select the option in meals and do the following all right and in here i'm just going to say echo uh we essentially just going to print out what the user so it's uh, what what what's going to happen is the user is going to enter what meal they want and then after where they vented it the script is going to display what option they selected and what meal they want and then you know it can simply say uh you know do you want to confirm this order or something like that all right so echo uh we're going to say the selected um option is we're just going to display just to make sure it all works now the selected option or the option is given uh, or stored in the variable reply i don't know whether i've mentioned this before but that can be also donated uh um, denoted by the reply variable all right so we're just going to initialize that variable right over there and it is already initialized as you can see it's not going to be initialized anywhere in the script but uh, once there is a reply given in, in into a menu or after you've selected an option it is stored in the reply variable all right and now we're just going to say echo uh so we said the selected option is reply and that's going to display the option all right uh so now we can say the selected season is the uh, we can say the selected uh, meal sorry uh no what am i saying so the select uh oops the selected meal is and i'll explain this if it if it's a bit confusing the selected meal is uh now we select the actual uh option that we specified right over here all right so we're just going to say option and we close that and we are done all right so before i actually explain what's going on here let me just run this script so let me save that and let me exit and i'm just going to launch the script all right so menus dot uh dot shell and already you can see uh it's going to prompt us and it's going to say welcome to bob's burgers please choose what you want to eat all right and it's going to give us two options very very nice burger and fries so i'm going to say uh let's say i want to uh, choose a burger so i'm going to select option one and i'm going to hit enter and it's going to prompt out the selected option is one correct and the selected meal is burger now after this one could say do you want to confirm this order and this is the simple logic behind programs or scripts that we see in you know in in, in the real world for example when you're ordering something at McDonald's uh, they have that uh, that new system where you can you know you order it yourself this is the simple logic this is not how it works but this is the logic here so you know you provide a user with options to select from and then those options once selected can then be used in different conditional statements so let's say i selected bur burger and now from the uh, from the reply variable i can say 
if the reply variable is a one, then I want you to prompt, uh, you, I want you to ask the user whether they want a, a chicken burger or a beef burger, right? So you get the idea. All right, so I'm just gonna close, I'm just gonna exit that script. Uh, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open Nano. So let me explain what we've done here. All right, so uh, we've asked the user, you know, we've prompted the user with a nice welcome message. So welcome to Bob's Burgers. Please choose the, uh, please choose what you want to eat. And the meals, uh, the list that contains the meals is right over here. And you can give it as many values as you want. All right, it really doesn't matter. Uh, and then we've said, uh, all right, I want you to create a menu. Uh, so we're going to select an option. We initialize the option variable here. Yeah, and again, you can name that whatever you want. You can call that option. You can call it choice, whatever makes sense logically. All right, so select option in the list meals. All right, so now each of these values is going to be de uh, denoted an option. So burger is option one, fries is option two. If I would have added hot dog or, you know, something like uh, fried chicken, uh, three and four respectively. So in that uh, list, I want you to do the following. I want you to uh, to print out the following. So uh, you want you to print out the selected option is, and you want you to display the variable that stores the value of the option the the value of the option that the user entered uh, or the, uh, uh, the the value of the option denoted from the list meals so that can be either option one so if it's option one it'll simply print out what option the user entered all right and the second one is going to print out the selected meal is and from the option here that we created it's simply going to print out what the actual option is from the list, not the, uh, the, the, uh, the option number, but the actual value of the option. All right. And that is simply what our script is going to do. Now, most of you might be curious and you might be thinking, well, how can we utilize this, uh, to make a really, really awesome script similar to the ones you see? Many of the scripts we see, uh, out there, uh, many of the popular network scanning scripts, um, and enumeration scripts all have options or menus within them. And that is to provide the user with a, a more uh, tailor-made uh, functionality or in regards to what they want to use uh, the script for. But this is very, very important as we are going to be utilizing this uh, uh, because I am creating my own network scan and, in, and enumeration script for Linux hosts. And uh, we're going to be creating it in this series. And uh, we need to get all the important things that you need to understand out of the way. All right. Um, so that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or found value in it, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or on my website. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.